So there we go, we've looked at the compressor and uh, the different settings on it. Now let's have a look at the noise gate. As you can see the noise gate has got similar settings, it's got a threshold, it's got an attack and instead of the uh, release time it's got a decay time which, which is pretty much similar to the release time of a compressor. There's a couple of additional uh, controls, there's the hold time and the range. Okay. Let's start off by turning the range all the way off to minus 70. And I'm just going to stop the track so you can hear me clearly. So we know the threshold is the part, the setting, where the signal has to reach before the device does something. Okay, so like on the compressor, we, we set that to minus 16. The signal has, had to reach minus 16 before it started to be compressed by the amount of ratio set. This is the same on the noise gate. We set the threshold to minus 16. We wouldn't hear anything until the signal reached minus 16. Then it would let the signal through. Okay, so let's let's start off with a low threshold, so the signal will pass through pretty easily. We'll start off with a, a fast decay, fast attack, and a fast hold. So basically, it's not holding at all. Now, if we start with these settings. Uh, just to get us going, it means that when we turn the threshold up, we'll hear something happen, even though it's not the desired effect we're after. Okay, so let's start the track and uh, see what we get. So I'm going to turn the gate on. Now, at the minute, the gate's probably not doing an awful lot at that level. Okay, so let's turn the threshold up and just to see where what happens. Okay. hear the signal chopping. Until we get too high and very occasionally the, the snare will hit and, and trigger the threshold at minus 7 dB but what it means is we're, mi we're missing lots of the hits so that's too high. So let's back that off quite a bit Okay, and again the way to set this is to look at your metering on the desk, 27 again because it's a snare. As you can see, if I turn the threshold right up, now the signal is always passing minus 30. Okay, so let's start off with minus 30. Good starting point. It doesn't sound very much like a snare now. If I turn the gate off and have a listen to it without the gate on, it's losing its end. It's very too quick. So what we need to do now, we need to extend the hold time for a bit longer. Now the best thing to do again is whiz through and keep listening. 243 milliseconds. I can just hear the hi hat creeping in now. So that's going to be too long, okay? So let's half that number. That'll be about 120 ish. There we go, 127. Okay, it's still cutting off. So let's increase the decay time. No, 
Now you can hear a little bit higher now, but it's actually coming on the end of the decay times, so that's better. The snare's got more of an actual ring. Let's turn the gate off again so we can hear what difference it's making. We can clearly hear the kick drum, the rise cymbal, the hi-hat there, and the odd cymbal crash. Okay, with the gate back on, it's definitely taking some of it out. Let's increase the threshold just a little wee bit. If I just turn the gate off again, and turn it back on, and let's run some uh, overhead mics. Actually, on this video, it's probably quite hard to hear um, the difference, but what I'm actually hearing in the room is the snare has got a bit of a, a dongy ring to it. Actually, gating the snare takes a bit of that donk out of it, so it's a bit more tighter. It doesn't resonate so long uh, on that tone, uh, which definitely clears it up quite a bit. Now, if I wanted to clear that up a bit more, I would probably reduce the hold time a bit. So let's run that again. I'll keep the decay as it is for the moment. And that's got a lot tighter. Let's just turn the gate off to hear what, how ringy it was before. And that is more obvious now. Let's, let's take the overheads out. that little ding afterwards. It's definitely gone once you start gating it. 